Unity of Houston is an inclusive church where we seek to understand and live the teachings of Jesus and other spiritual masters. At Unity, we welcome all people from all spiritual paths and every walk of life. We celebrate the diversity of our city and of our world, and we teach love, tolerance, and oneness, seeking to live in harmony with open minds and open hearts. Wherever you are in your spiritual path, you are always welcome at Unity. Join us and discover that the life of your dreams is already within you. <clears throat> the love is overwhelming, but it feels good, and I thank you. And I send it back to you. Uh, we embrace in the love that holds us all and really makes us one always. Thought about all of you and through the year, as Diane has. And Diane, go ahead and stand and take a bow here. She's uh, been a bit part. <laughs> yes, we talk often about this church. We still feel uh, you as a family. And um, yeah, it's been an, uh, uh, an interesting year. It's been a quick year. And I just uh, have to say that um, I couldn't be more thrilled with the fact that you have as your leader, Michael Gott. Um, being able to leave a ministry that you have served for 34 years in sweat, blood, and tears, um, it is hard to leave. And when you are able to do so with a person who is so devoted and so dedicated and so caring, I had the pleasure of working with Michael for six years, and I knew it was his uh, to do. And he is doing a fabulous job. I, I, everything I see and know, and so I salute you. Few of you may realize what it takes to run a large ministry. It is all consuming, it's 24 seven. It demands a tremendous soul force. Uh, it's always there, always on you. And uh, so please support this beautiful soul uh, that you have drawn uh, as your next leader. So love you, Michael, love you. Um, so this is my first time in this beautiful facility as a guest speaker. <laughs> uh, and there's a wonderful story I want to tell you. Um, Jerry Roberts, who is Minister of Unity in North Houston, uh, shared this with me. And some years back, he was invited to come speak at the midweek service here at our church. And uh, Reverend Patricia Bass was the senior associate at the time in overseeing the Wednesday night service. And so uh, he had sent in a, a title that, uh, via the email. And it was a topic on forgiveness, but, uh, and the idea that it wasn't you know, overwhelming, you shouldn't give it power, you get, move beyond it, don't allow it to be so big. So that was kind of his theme. And I don't know, remember the title, but the title had the word sin in it. And so as she read that title, she thought it might be a little bit too harsh or misinterpreted, so he, she called him and suggested that maybe he change the title. So he was on the phone and, you know, wanting to handle it quickly. He said, okay, you know, thinking again, his theme, not making it too big. He said, uh, use the title, uh, it's no big deal. Okay, so she took that. And uh, the day he arrived on the marquee, it said, Wednesday night, Jerry Roberts to guest speak. It's no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine driving up <laughs> and seeing that? Uh, well, I'm here to tell you today, it's a big deal. It is for me, and I hope it is for you. My title is Being Ready Now. And readiness is an interesting idea. Being ready, uh, you know, for change is an interesting concept, interesting idea, and the question, when, a, when is a person ready? When are they ready to uh, change inwardly or outwardly in, in some way to move them forward? And that song that was sung today, Moving Forward, was very, very powerful and meaningful. And uh, it's kind of easy to make a change sometimes when, when things as they are aren't good and uh, they're, you're wanting to get beyond them, and uh, it's just not happening, and uh, that type of thing. But it's harder to make a change and leave something to what is when things are going good, 
and you're happy and you're having some uh, amount of success. And so that was kind of my experience in leaving my first ministry in Olympia, as Michael referred, uh, referenced. And uh, we were very happy there. Everything was going great. But then I got a call, and, and I wasn't ready to leave. It was too good. But yet, sometimes it's not always about going on to what's next because you think you'll like it or you want it. It may be because it's for your growth. And that was the question I asked, and that was what Spirit said, that I was being called to my next level of growth and perhaps discomfort, which I went through my share of. And uh, so I followed that calling, and, and it turned out wonderful. And then the same thing in leaving here after 34 years. Um, there was a part of me that uh, didn't want to, was not ready. And then there was the other part that I knew was calling me to what was next, even though it had an element of the unknown. It was just very clear to me. And so I, I did respond to that. And so, you know, life is like a game of hide and seek. And uh, you remember the game of hide and seek where, you know, one person closes their eyes and counts to 10 and says, ready or not, I'm, here I come. And um, matter of fact, my little three-year-old granddaughter and I were playing that just the other day. And forever and ever, she kept wanting me to hide. I was running out of places. <laughs> um, but anyway, I think we, both have, we have both of those characteristics going on in us. It fluctuates. Sometimes we want to hide. And sometimes we want to seek. In other words, there are moments in my life where I wanted to pull back and hide out for a while, play it safe. And then there were times where I was ready to go and I was ready to throw myself fully into what was next, seeking, searching, wanting to grow, wanting to risk, even if it meant leaving the known to reach for the unknown. And so we have that conflict that can go on inside of us at times. It's, and in the game of hide and seek, there is that statement, ready or not, here I come. And that's what life will often say to you. Ready or not, I'm coming. Your next change is here. You know, and sometimes, whether we want it or not, it's you know, thrown upon us. And so it's for our growth. It really is. And uh, life comes at you in different ways. And it takes you to different places. And you face different circumstances and conditions because it's all in the divine design for you to be able to reach deeper inside of yourself, to understand your true self, uh, the power that you have. Uh, to move forward uh, in connection with the divine. And so I've had things come to me like one board member, uh, I wasn't here too long, called me up and said, uh, would you like to come to my birthday party uh, and skydive? Um, anyone who wants to skydive, we're doing it at an airfield terminal. I wasn't ready to skydive at that time. <laughs> but he was on the board and I thought, well, this would be good for my growth. And so I was up there at 10,000 feet, jumping out of a plane, facing my fears. I had Tony Robbins come and have call, call us up and say, uh, your minister is invited uh, free char of charge to walk on fire at my fire walking workshop. I wasn't ready to walk on fire. <laughs> but I went and I walked on fire. There was a time when I was very burned out after we'd built this church and, uh, and then I was really wanting to throw myself into what was next to be filled, whatever the risk, and whatever. And I opened myself up, and through a series of events, I was taken to uh, being exposed to uh, the Oneness University in India, and ended up going there 10 times. And uh, along the way, I got a call one morning about the fifth or sixth or seventh time I was to India. They said, you have been chosen through deep prayer to be uh, initiated as a Oneness meditator. Well, I didn't know if I was ready to be a Oneness meditator, to come back and actually, with a gaze, extend energies to people, if you understand energies, how that might be taken. I was scared. I didn't know if I was ready. But because it came to me, I said yes to it and brought it back, and it was well received. So there are different things that happen in our life uh, along the way that are all there to help us grow. Uh, we may count to 10 in the way of seconds, minutes, hours, days, years. Uh, at any moment in time, the next thing may appear in front of us um, saying, ready or not, uh, here I come. This is a change. How are you going to show up? Are you going to answer the call? I believe that much, if not all, of life is about finding yourself. And uh, that's your true self, the part of you that has been with you all along, the real you that you have always been, a part of you that sometimes falls asleep. It's the highest self. Sometimes we may hide out from it. 
uh, it's a process that we're all growing through. It may carry its fears, its judgments, its worldly conditions, all the things that pull us away from the real us that is living there inside. But we're here to discover that higher self and uh, to be that. Now, I make a distinction between who you are and what you are. What you are is created by God. What you are is a son of God, a child of God. You are spirit. You are eternal. You are whole, complete, um, perfect. You are love. You are joy. You are peace. That is the vibration you were created and seen and held to be by that which has given you life. That is the truth. The who of you is the part that we create. We have been given free will, and therefore we can focus here, there, and wherever. We can have judgments about ourselves, about the world, about life. We have consciousness, and consciousness is given into our hands as to how we're going to direct it. And so the who we are often, uh, you know, has its challenges. Uh, it falls away sometimes uh, in the sense that it can fluctuate, it can vary, whereas the what of you is permanent. You are whole and complete as God sees you. That what of you. The who of you fluctuates, varies. You can have moods. It can have attitudes. It can have states of mind. Different emotions come up as you encounter things. You can be mad, sad, glad, uh, fearful, kind, unkind, all these different things as you are triggered based on where your consciousness may be. Who you are also is often attached to the realm of form. So we think that we are our body. Uh, well, we have our body for a time, but we have really a spiritual body. Paul talked about that. And we think who we are is our job, our career, our, our accomplishments, our successes, our failures, our car, our home, our achievements, our bank account, whatever. We have all of those things, and sometimes we think that's who we are and that's how we get measured. But all of that is about who. We need to remember the what. Ego sometimes gets mixed into that. Ego is really working with the who a lot. Um, because the ego wants to measure, wants to compare all of those outer external things and see whether or not you measure up, whether you're good enough, all of these kinds of things that are very much the human uh, experience and the human journey, back to discovering what you are and simply being that and allowing the what to be in the who uh, so that the who kind of fades away. It's not attacking ego, it's only starving it because the what has taken over. And so... There's a Course in Miracles uh, talks beautifully about this idea that the, the, the voice of ego always sends us to fear and separation. The voice of the Holy Spirit takes us to love. And there's a, a statement in the Course in Miracles that I love, which, which says, the Holy Spirit answers truly for all time. Here then, the one answer to all questions posed by the ego. You are a child of God a priceless part of his kingdom. In the kingdom, where you are and what you are is perfectly certain. There is no doubt. That's, the, that's, that's who we need to embrace. That is so powerful to me. We are in the kingdom all the time, but we're asleep to the kingdom of what we are. And that's why identity is so important to me. There is the Gospel of Thomas, which didn't make it into the Bible, but has rich uh, teachings, which uh, has Jesus speaking as well. And one of the uh, statements in the book of Thomas that has Jesus saying is, it's this. Jesus says, if you bring forth what is within you, what is within you will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. In other words, there is the you that you know on some level is your true essence, and not to bring forth it is conflicting inside. You know you're something more than this. We happen, it happens all the time for us. And it's not going to destroy you physically or as a soul. It's just simply going to destroy the love, the peace, and the joy that you were meant to have if you were living from what? You understand? So it's nothing to be frightened about. But there is... Also a, a statement from the Gospel of Thomas, again, where Jesus says this. He says, if those who lead you say to you, see, the kingdom is in the sky, then the birds of the sky will precede you. If they teach you that the kingdom is in the sea, then the fish will precede you to the kingdom. Rather, Jesus says, the kingdom of God is inside you and outside of you. 
meaning it's everywhere, this kingdom. It's in every one. It's the all that is. And to embrace that is very powerful. He goes on to say and finish this statement, when you come to know yourselves, then you, meaning the real you, become known. And you will realize that it is you who are the sons of the living God. But if you will not know yourselves, you dwell in poverty, and it is you who are that poverty. You understand? We're talking about consciousness, and we're not talking about a, a, a poverty that is physical. It's soul poverty. It's the poverty that says you don't have the richness of the spirit that is there for you and your truth of being. So it's important. Carl Jung, the great psychologist, he said there are two, two essential phases to our lives. They begin at a little different times for all of us, but essentially the first part or first half of your life, give or take a few years, is the stage where you are developing tools of survival and making it in this world. And that means you create an identity, you create personality and an ego. And that the second phase of your life is essentially undoing and unlearning the ego. So that essentially you create a who and are trying to get back to what? That's where we're at. You know, uh, um, in my first four and a half months um, after leaving, um, Diane and I went and attended a, a convention, uh, the CSL convention in California. And uh, I had never been to a CSL convention. I've attended Unity conventions. It's made up of uh, ministers from that movement, centers for spiritual living, board members, congregants, or what have you. So uh, one morning I, was, I got my buffet lunch, or not lunch, breakfast, and went into another room where you'd sit in a table of round, a round table of 10 people. And uh, a guy came and sat down next to me, and I'd never met him before, and so I said, what's your name? And um, he said, Peter, and I said, you know, what ministry are you associated with? And he said, um, oh, I'm a minister, and uh, I'm in uh, Iowa, I think he said. And I said, oh, great, great. And then he asked me who I was, and uh, yeah, I said, I'm Howard Caesar. No response. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so then he said, uh, what church are you associated with? And I said, Unity of Houston. He said, oh, Michael Gott's church? <laughs> Four and a half months, 34 years. <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> He's wonderful. <laughs> and he is, and you are blessed to have him. You really are. Earlier we talked about uh, the game of hide-and-seek, and, seek. and uh, there is uh, an example of hide-and-seek in the Garden of Eden story, Adam and Eve. And, um, you know, there was only to eat of the, the tree of life, which was the tree of what you are, total absolute oneness with the truth. And then there was the tree of uh, good and not good. And um, so they ate of the tree of good and not good. And that was when Ahu was born, because now they were into determining for themselves and their will what they were or who they were and all that process. So this is all metaphysical, of course, and it's just explaining the process that we go through getting back to uh, the kingdom of heaven, which is really uh, the Garden of Eden. Left the Garden of Eden, kingdom of heaven, synonymous. Um, so anyway, when the who came into effect and into being, we then had the game of hide and seek came into being. Because if you recall, Adam and Eve went and they hid, because now there were parts of themselves they didn't like. And, and so then Jesus had to play the seeker. And in the passage, Jesus comes, you know, searching in the garden. And he's walking in the garden, they say. And, and, and the passage says, and he says, where are you? And I ask, do you really believe an all-knowing God would not know where Adam and Eve are <laughs> hiding in the bushes? So that you need to understand that basically this is metaphysical. And he wasn't asking, where are you physically? He knew they had eaten of the tree of good and not good. And now he said, where are you in consciousness? Where are you in your mind? Where are you in your heart? And where are you going from here? And that's the question we ask ourselves all the time because we're playing hide and seek. We have callings. Even, the, even Moses, you know, he was called to lead the people out of bondage in Egypt. That's our story. 
the story is really about us being led out of bondage to ourselves. And you need to see that. He wasn't ready. He said, I'm not prepared. I'm not equipped. I'm slow of speech. Uh, he essentially he said, who am I to do this? He was in his who. You know what the God of, of, us, of us all said? Essentially, he said, well, the who of you isn't going to do this. I will be with you, was the line. The I will be with you is the what that will do this. The I will be with you is the what that will always move you forward. The I that will be with you is the what that is always ready, always equipped, always ready to face the unknown. If you will know the what of you that says, I will be with you. Very powerful, very powerful. So what is it that you have on hold? What is it that you're holding back and saying no to, to the calling that might be there? So that is one big key in being ready now, your identity. The goal of life is not to get into some book of who's who. It's to finally find out what's what. <laughs> <laughs> So quickly, a second application uh, to this is simply putting the, a, a second idea to being uh, able to um, uh, be ready now is application. There is so much that our life could be more if we were really seriously applying all the things that we have learned and come to know. Um, the Apostle Paul, you know, he says, one thing that I do, forgetting the things that are behind me, reaching forward to the things that are ahead, I press on, you know, I, toward the goal for the prize of the upward calling of God in me. And that's what we're all called to do. I love that, that passage. You know, Nike has a great so slogan. It's just do it. And uh, it's a, a slogan I think we should all maybe take more to heart. Um, it's the adventure of life. There is a big biblical uh, uh, passage about just doing it, that, that theme, that idea, that slogan. In Genesis, it says, whatever God has said to you, do. And I always add just, just do. <laughs> and then there's the book of do it Aronomy. <laughs> there's a passage in that book also that says this, and it's very, very applicable here. It, it, it goes, in this that I command you, it is not too hard or far off. The word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you can just do it. I added the word just, but those were the words. Deuteronomy chapter 31. There's a spirit that is in you that knows exactly what you need, what you need to learn, what action you need to take to move you forward in your life from where you are in this moment in time. I don't care where you are. I don't care what your age. I don't care what your condition. I don't care what it is. There is something internal, external. They are all meshing to take you forward to what is, is next. There is an improv, master of improv, and improv is where you're handed something and you just have to go with it, ready or not. And uh, that master, his name is Del Close. And he says, he's quoted to say, fall, then figure out what to do on the way down. <laughs> and, and what he really means by that is, is there, that's an el like an element of life. Sometimes we're not fully prepared and ready for what comes at us, but if you're, if you're improving, basically go ahead and jump into this process, leap into it, and figure out what to do on the ride. We're all on this ride in this life, and we're blessed to be in it. Quickly, I want to read you about a, a guy who was able to leap. In 1966, a dyslexic 16-year-old boy dropped out of school. With the help of a friend, he started a magazine for students and made money by selling advertisements to local businesses. With only a little bit of money to get started, he ran the operation out of the crypt inside a little church. For years, four years later, he was looking for ways to grow his small magazine and started selling mail order records to the students who bought the magazine. The record sold out well enough that he built his first record store the next year. After two years of selling records, he decided to open his own record label and recording studio. He rented the studio out to local artists, including one named Mike Oldfield. And in that small recording studio, Oldfield created his hit song, Tubular Bells, which became the record label's first release. It sold over five million copies. 
Over the next decade, the young man grew his record label by adding bands like Culture Club and the Rolling Stones. He continued starting companies, an airline business, then trains, then mobile phones, on and on. Almost 50 years later, there were over 400 companies under his direction. Today, that boy who was dyslexic and dropped out of school and kept starting things despite his inexperience and lack of knowledge is a billionaire. You know him by the name Sir Richard Branson. All right, we're not all here to be millionaires or billionaires, but we're here to grow, okay? We're here to move forward. And he was quoted to say this, a side effect of doing challenging work is that you're pulled by excitement and pushed by confusion at the same time. No matter where you are in the world, and regardless of what you're working on, I hope you'll start before you feel ready. That's his message to us. I hope you'll feel, I hope you'll start before you feel ready. That's my message to you today. I hope you'll start before you feel ready. There's a lot of things I never felt ready for that, as I shared, I le leaped into. Life doesn't ask us to be married to one way of doing something. And don't squeeze the infant into one small mold. The infant has many ways in which to manifest and bring about your highest and greater good. So first of all, there are steps here. Number one, take responsibility. Answer God's question that was put to Adam and Eve. Where are you in your mind and heart? Secondly, remember your identity. If you bring forth what is within you, what is within you will save you. Third, listen within to what is calling you. Fourth, bond, partner, trust the infinite that says to you as it said to Moses, I will be with you. And fifth, just do it. Take action and take the next step in the adventure of this life that you've been given, whatever it is. Time, we've been taught spiritually is an illusion, but in this physical world, time seems to exist. We're not to kill time. We're not to waste time. Time is precious. It's non-refundable. This is your time. This is my time. This is our time. Ready or not, this is your time. Be ready now to live life fully. Just do it. Just do it. I love you all. Just do it. Thank you for watching this message today. I'd like to invite you to join us in person here on campus at Unity of Houston for Sunday morning or Wednesday evening services. If you can't be with us here on our campus, you can still join us live on Facebook or on our website, unityhouston.org, Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Central.